It'll never work that way. <laughs> Are we gonna go? We're gonna go. Should we get one more? We we should get one more. All right. Hello and welcome everybody to the lobby cast, the official podcast of wherever you want it to be the official podcast of. I'm here today with Brick. Brick. And uh, of course I am Jeff. And uh, this is episode 288, and today is August 29th. It is indeed. It is indeed August 29th. So, Brick, probably the uh, the biggest news we have this week were the uh, the Emmy winners. Yes. And uh, I know this is something of, of great interest to you and, and lots of people and, and occasionally to me. Uh, any big surprises for you this year? No. <laughs> <laughs> Same as it ever was. It's pretty much how I expected it to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we almost could have predicted a lot of these, or most of these winners, for Only sure. Only almost. Almost we all. We could have predicted pretty much all of these. Well, you see, I still haven't seen a single episode of Modern Family, so but it's hard it's... for me to say, oh, well, Modern Family is going to win. But I do have a lot of history to say that Modern Family is going to win. That's why. I mean, there are better comedies out there. Modern Family is yeah. good, but there's better comedies out there. But it's because of history. Right. You can just be like, yeah, probably. <laughs> if I'd had a list, if I'd taken the multiple choice test, I probably would have done very well with this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, drama series, Breaking Bad be their uh, their last time in contentious for this contention for this award so of course they uh they, they won up it. a lot of them yeah they picked up a lot uh they also got a uh, lead actor in a drama series for brian cranston and aaron paul uh got best supporting actor in a drama series and a gun supporting actress in a drama series so yeah they, they did they did pretty well what else did they get uh, writing for a drama series, and let's see if there's something else. They got most of them. Most of the ones they are eligible for, they went ahead and, and just won them. Yeah. So, um, what I liked seeing was uh, Fargo getting a little bit of recognition. Um, mini series. Mini series, and let's see, there was something else. Oh, uh, directing for a mini series movie or dramatic special. For a Col- Colin Buskey, 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 Bus- <laughs> we'll just call him Buskey. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever his name is. Um, something I didn't know about is uh, writing for a variety special. Sarah Silverman picked up one for We Are Mir- Miracles. I'm not aware of We Are Mir- Miracles. Nor am I. Yeah, I didn't know about that yep. until until she won for it. <laughs> <laughs> So is it there uh anything else? Oh here. You uh Louie. You're a big fan of Louie. Yep. So And it was for a really good episode too. Oh, okay. Well there you go. Because they only they judge it based off of one episode. Really? Did you know that? I was not aware. That all of these series that are nominated, they the creators or producers, whatever, they uh pick one episode. And they send it in to be judged, and that is the episode that wins the Emmy. I was not aware of that. That seems um, because I mean, there's it so seems m- a little lame because every show can have a good episode. Well, yeah, but there's there's so many series out there. So for I guess the they couldn't people, really the people who are voting on it they can't watch all of the series of all of the shows. So right, you know, I mean, granted. Probably a lot of the shows that win are shows that the people who are voting already just watch sure. themselves. Sure. But, um, but yeah. So uh, for uh, Louis C.K. for uh, Louis, it was what about the fat girl? Okay. Which was one of the better episodes of of the season for Breaking Bad. I'm not sure which one. I'm going to assume it was the final episode. Okay. It could have been. I mean, it could have been. A multitude of episodes. It could have been really any one of them. Right. Vince right. Gilligan could have just been like that one and sent yeah. it in, and they probably would have won. So, 
Well, that that makes knowing that that makes me question whether or not uh, people in these high profile series uh, direct an Emmy nominee episode, like write and direct one specifically tailored to be could be uh, given to the Academy. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, because I mean, I'm sure you can notice in in a lot of series that there's always one episode that's better than the others. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. And and that's probably why the episode know. that the creator of the show directs and writes, right? Exactly, uh, which is usually early on in the season or really really late in the season. Yeah, yeah. It's never like a mid episode. Nope. That's, that's a fantastic one. Like Unless it's at, a mid season finale. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's late yeah. in the season, you know, yeah. ish, ish. But yeah, that's that's how it works, you know. I mean, because if you think about it, they just wouldn't have time. To watch, you would have to do nothing but watch television if you're one of the Emmy well, yeah, judges. Because there's for best drama, best comedy, lead. Uh, there's there's five nominees each yeah. for both of those, and then there's there might be another uh, show that sneaks in for lead actor and lead actress, but it's not in best comedy or drama. So then that's like six or seven series for each that you have to watch all of the series it just it wouldn't make sense yeah. there wouldn't be enough time to do it so they just send in one but it wouldn't be a bad job to have it wouldn't be a terrible job to have because it's not like you had to watch all of the television shows you just have to watch the ones that win nominations so you could find yourself watching some pretty pretty good television true but imagine also how they determine nominations too how do they do that well, the same thing, but it's just, it's all of the crap shows, too, because everybody submits for Emmys. Oh, okay. Everybody submits for Emmys, but only a few get nominated. Well, I, w- I wonder if there are people who are showrunners out there that are just like, like no. uh, I mean, this show isn't really Emmy worthy, so we're not going to submit. Doubtful. <laughs> everybody thinks that they're Come on, worthy. let's be honest with ourselves here, folks. We do a, a barely mediocre job here. Yeah. Barely. <laughs> yeah. Dick Wolf has never said that. <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, yeah, but it was it was pretty pretty as to be expected. Okay. This year, but good. Good for Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah, definitely good for Breaking Bad. And uh, directing for a dr- drama series, True Detective, which I haven't started yet. Yeah. yeah, and see, that was the thing, is a lot of people were thinking that Breaking Bad was going to win like drama, but True Detective was going to get acting. Okay, and it and it didn't work out that way. It did not work out that way. But, uh, lead actor in a mini- miniseries or movies, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch for Sherlock. All right. Oh, and uh, Colbert won again. Right, right. What is? Uh, I can't remember what the category is, but he yeah. won two Emmys. So I, I th- I'm assuming one is for writing. Uh, that would, that would make sense. And let's see here. Uh, he won for a variety series. Okay. Yeah. That one. Uh, make. Sherlock also won for, uh, writing for a mini series movie or dramatic special and supporting actor in a mini series or movie for Martin Freeman. Um, yes. American horror story coven picked up a few, uh, lead actress and, Support uh, supporting actress for Jessica Lange and Kathy Bates, yep, respectively, and I think that's about it. Amazing Race won for a reality competition program, right? And then is that the one where they drop them off in some remote area and they have to get somewhere? Yeah, it's like they have a pair of people. I haven't seen it, but I. I'm familiar with it. I've seen ads. And then television movie, The Normal Heart. Yep. Um, I've I've heard of it, but I I haven't seen that one. Very good. So yeah. Uh huh. All right. There you go. All right. Um, that's about it for the Emmys. Unless you had something else. Nope. Nothing I can think. Got of. it about covered there. Yeah. Yeah. And the only other bit of news <clears throat> this week, just kind of an interesting thing. Um. Miyamoto was being, uh, you know, the guy from Nintendo, he was being interviewed and talking about uh, the casual gamer, 
you know, for which Nintendo is is pretty well known. Right. And uh, he said, uh, of casual gamers, these are the sort of people who, for example, might want to watch a movie. They might want to go to Disneyland. Their attitude is, okay, I am the customer. You are supposed to entertain me. It's kind of a passive attitude they're taking, and to me, it's kind of a pathetic thing. They do not know how interesting it is if they move one step further and try to challenge yourself with more advanced games. So it's kind of an interesting thing, and it ma- makes me wonder if, you know, maybe this will usher in, uh, like, an era of, of more core gaming for uh, Nintendo. That would be that would be a good change for them, because really, after the Wii and the Wii U, they uh, they really could use some more core games. They're going to have more core games. That's they're, good. They're coming. Because they have a new system that barely even was noticed when it released on the market. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's picking up steam now. Right. That's because of new announcements and everything like that. How long has it been out? It had a year head start on the the yeah, other so two systems, didn't it? Like, yeah, like two years maybe <laughs> that's so sad i i i've seen one on display at at a, a store and not felt the urge to go over and at least pick up the controller or look at the system i didn't even like oh we you kept on walking well it's went it's, on about my business it's a good system I mean, it's a, it's a really fun system to play. They just need more titles. That's yeah. the, that's their big thing. Is they just they have they have their their core titles, you know, like Mario and and things like that. The, the reason that it's picked up steam lately is because of Mario Kart Eight, and so because of that, I mean, the sales for it have gone way up because people well, are buying good. it just for that. That's that's good. I mean, uh, Mar- Mario titles; those are are you know people who always buy Nintendo stuff, no matter what. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, then they're gonna have Super Smash that comes out a little later this year, and that's gonna really drive sales, you know. And then they've announced new Legend of Zelda, and there's they're working on some things, some that's stuff, good. And some things, some things and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's one thing that we talked about uh, whenever, not whenever the Wii came out, but like early on in the uh, in the podcast, early episodes, talking about how you know how well the Wii was selling, and I, I wonder if it's almost if their huge success with the Wii is almost why they're not doing as well with the Wii U, because like so many people bought a Wii, like so many households yeah. had a Wii in them. And they probably bought them, played them for a few months, and then they just started collecting dust. Right. It's like, well, we obviously don't need the new system because we haven't played the old system in several years. Right. You know, that kind of, well, that kind they, of a experience. They do have kind of a leg up over Microsoft and Sony in one area because they're, it's the only system that's backwards compatible. Well, that is nice. That's always a good thing. Yeah, the uh, the PS4 and the th- Xbox One, they Are both not. changed architecture so much that it would be very difficult to do backwards compatibility. Right. Uh, Sony is getting past that with streaming Yes. Streaming PS3 games and PS2 games, right? Yeah, I think so. Are they doing PS1 also? Uh, Yeah, I think they... It'll be in there somewhere? They're going to. As part of point. PlayStation Now, maybe? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, it's just... Uh, it's a, it's an interesting problem, you know, when you change your system so much that you can't go back and play the last generation's games. And it makes me wonder if uh, Microsoft will get on board with that. I mean, they have they have the cloud infrastructure to be able to do it. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not they'll they'll actually do it. Right. They could. They could. There are no technical barriers to them doing it. There um, might be financial ones, though. Yeah, yeah. But I know that... Especially because they're releasing all of, like, the really... And so is Sony. They're releasing, yeah. like, their super big titles just remastered on their new systems. Right. 
And so, and they're selling them for nearly as much as the original, right? And uh, instead of twenty bucks, they're I think they're charging forty or fifty for most of them, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Like Last of Us was yeah. fifty, and um, I'm sure Master Chief. I think Master Chief Collection sixty, but that's 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 four, four games. games. Yeah. So you know, that's not that's not totally horrible. No, no, it's not totally horrible because I'm I'm gonna buy it. Well, yeah. I mean, you look at it, $15 a piece, not not such a bad deal. $15 a piece, and you get to see, I mean, because what they did, I don't know if you ever played the, the original Halo when they remastered it for the 360. Yeah, I've got, I've got the anniversary edition. They did a really good job remastering that game. Oh, yeah. I mean, for what they had to work with, like, and what's really cool is, like, when you could go back, when you could... Uh, um, switch back and forth between yeah. the original graphics and what they did to it, so you could just see the side by side difference of how how much they changed it. they put into it. Yeah, they. Um, that's one of the things that they're touting about this Master Chief Collection is the anniversary version of Halo Two. Halo Two. Yeah. There's no fade to black screen and come back in. It is instant change. You like between the two graphics, right? right. So. Well, and what's awesome is is that you're going to get a remastered version of Halo 1, remastered version of Halo 2, uh, remastered of Halo 3, and 4. And 4 right. already looked fantastic. Yeah. But the, but the uh, 3 and 4 are not getting the anniversary treatment. No, no. But they are getting some touch-ups. Yeah, it'll be upscale of the same graphics. Right. Rather than with Halo Two, it's uh, it's being like redone on a new engine. Right, right. Well, and the reason for that the is, Halo 4 is because engine, I think. they they don't really need to do that for three and four. Yeah, because they were already pretty close. Yeah, you know. Whereas one and two were on the original Xbox, so it's yeah. two generations back now. I'm excited to play Halo Two. Yeah, I'm excited nice to play through all of them. I'm excited to have multi, uh, like online multiplayer for, like good online multiplayer. Well, it's going to be good two. online multiplayer, and it's going to be all of the most popular maps yeah. from, from two on. It's all the maps, isn't it? I don't know that it's all the maps, but it's all of like the the best ones, the yeah, the and most I, popular ones. That I also saw that both in campaign and in multiplayer, there'll be playlists of so that come from different games yes like so you pl- do a playlist and even the campaign playlist where like okay well it's this kind of playlist this kind of gameplay or whatever so for instance vehicles uh-huh. so you'll play the levels with vehicles from each game right yeah and which I, is I think really that'll cool. be a lot of fun i mean you know it's not a new halo but for people who like Halo, it's it's going to be really fun. It's going to be, going to be the business. Yeah. For Jordan, it will be the, the temptation. For Jordan, that's going to be the pushover. Yeah. I guarantee you <laughs> that if if he buys an Xbox One soon, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be because of that. Yeah. It's going to be because he comes over here and sees you playing the Master Chief Collection and is like, oh, no, you now know I have to spend money. <laughs> I may buy it. Just so that he'll get an Xbox One. Just to tempt him. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to buy it. So, I mean, yeah. if he gets an Xbox One and he gets it, he'll have two people to play f- play with already. And check out Lou kind of hinting that he might want to get a, an a Xbox One or PS4. Yeah. Well, and, and see, I, I, he's, I like how he tags all of us in there to get the Xbox One. And then I just come in and I'm like, well, you can get it on both. I don't care. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I think that's uh, that's about it for news. I ended up talking a lot about Halo, and we weren't even talking about Halo, so that's yeah. awesome. Yep. Hi, yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the weekly watches. Brick, what you been listening to, sir? Nothing really. What? Just some shuffle. All right. That's it. I can respect that. Yeah. So nothing much. How All about right. you, though? Well, I've been listening to uh, mostly podcasts this week. Of course, I'm listening to Shuffle in the Car 
and uh, well, I, I think that's about the only, and maybe shuffle at work. Okay. Yeah. But uh, my other pod, le, podcasts I've been listening to lately are uh, stu- it's stuff to blow your mind. Your mind. It's when the How Stuff Works podcast. Okay. How to do everything. This is an oh, NPR really? podcast. Freakonomics. Uh, I think it's Chicago Public Radio. Uh, Remember when is uh, Paris Lowley and Jay Van Buren? They're talking about movies for the most part and hardcore history and common sense. And those are both Dan Carlin uh, shows. Yes. So uh, the the impressive thing about listening to an entire episode of Hardcore History, it was four hours long. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And it's a blueprint for Armageddon part four, I think is the, what I listened to. So, but, uh, really good shows one and all, uh, the stuff to blow your mind is, is, uh, science and things. They were talking about, uh, plagues, mm-hmm. in, insects and animals and stuff like that. So it's kind of, kind of interesting and, uh, makes me kind of glad that I don't have to experience such things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't like any kind of plagues. Yeah. Biblical or otherwise. No. <laughs> plagues are generally bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the uh, one on Christmas Island I thought was particularly interesting where these uh, little crabs, these red crabs, come out of the forest and go through everything on their way down to the ocean to uh to lay their eggs and stuff like that Uh and then the hatchlings swarm on the way back going up to the the forest and stuff but it it's it blankets the street like you can not see anything but crab underneath your your feet so you're just crunch crunch crunching and then uh, there are uh, mice plagues where <clears throat> Same kind of situation. Yeah. You you cannot step without squishing. Isn't it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's kind of gross. That's that's not right. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's about it. Uh I'm listening to just lots of podcasts this week. So it's good stuff. What you watching, Brick? Um Lots of well, some stuff, some stuff. Uh, and search the West Wing. Okay, The Office. Yes, rewatches. Uh, the yeah, those are those are some rewatches. There's another one on down the list. Um, the Leftovers, which I think is over now, but I don't know. Um, I think they had a, a two-hour episode finale here in the last couple of days. Was it? I thought so. It was one of the shows that I started watching and I'll have to didn't, look it up. Didn't continue with, and I, I just noticed yesterday, like oh, they had a finale the episode, because it was uh, episode oh nine and episode ten. Okay, I didn't see ten. The last episode I saw was nine. So okay, I I missed one. Okay, um, so I'll have to I'll have to see if I can find that on the HBO goes. Um, but it's, it's good, man. I really like it. Did it get much better? It did. Like, especially with episode nine, I was such a fan of that episode. (laughs) Okay. I really Uh, was. Did so much happen in between episodes three and nine that if I just watched nine, I I would be lost? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, because there, there is quite a bit of stuff that happens. And 9 is almost like a prequel episode. And usually that doesn't work. Right. But it works okay. this time. Because it's it's necessary. You know, it explains some things that, weren't, that were otherwise not explained. Well, maybe I should watch episode 9 and then continue watching the series <laughs> from the beginning. But it, it's it's really good. I, I very much enjoy it. Like, after episode 9, I was like... Oh, I'm going to miss this show now. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good sign. Um, you know, because like usually every week I would see the leftovers in my DVR list and I'd be like, oh, I need to be in a really good mood when I start watching this because if I'm not, I might kill myself at the end of it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> right. 
I mean, it is a super depressing show. I'm not going to beat around that. It just is. Like, yeah. every episode, it just, you finish it, and you're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Cheese and rice. I guess, I'll, I guess I'll, like, you know, live now. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Yikes. But, um... And then something that made me extremely happy is that True Blood is now over. Yeah. Yeah. The last episode was decent. Um I I was falling asleep during it. I watched it late last night. And uh this morning I got up and I was like, "Oh, you know what? I fell asleep during that I'll during several parts go. of it. I'll give it a go. nah." <laughs> because I did wake up for the ending. Okay. And it irritated me. Which ending? All of them. The half, happy, fluffy ending after she killed Vampire Bill. That oh, should sorry. have just been it. Spoiler alert. She kills Vampire Bill. That should have just been it. Yeah, but she all of the the, the stuff family with... things. and yeah, Did but... they show who she ended up marrying? I just I saw the shot at the table at the end. It was just some, some dark-haired guy with a I, mustache and goatee. I don't and, think that, that was the, the point of it. I don't think it was like anyone that we were supposed right, to Right, it was just yeah. some random yeah. person. Okay. Yeah, this is just... Yeah. 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 It should yeah. have just been her stake and bill, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, because the whole like spur of the moment wedding between Ho- Hoyt and Jessica, I thought that was pretty stupid. Yeah, and it was like rushed. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's and... Just... Sookie being able to hear Bill's thoughts yeah. at the end. Yeah. That was almost as stupid as the explanation. Well, he said he felt most human in his life. Yeah, yeah. no. It's not... Uh, the disease isn't going to turn him into a human before right. he... That's, no. God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All those things. And the the cheesy TV personas of... Of Eric and, and uh, Pam. Pam. I liked that oh. better than the family stuff. Oh, yeah. It was better than the family stuff. Because that was at least kind of chuckle-worthy. Right. You know. But, uh, it's, Anna, Anna Camp's still gorgeous. Yeah. And so, so is uh, Hoyt's ex, Jason's, uh, the girl he marries at the end. Dang. <laughs> Just saying. But it's over. It's yeah. over now. I mean, and it was, it's not to say that the whole show was bad, because we wouldn't have been watching it to this point if it was. I don't know. No, the first, like, three, maybe four seasons were good. Yeah, maybe so. I, I don't know. I It's just, it's been so long. I mean, and then the seasons after that have had their moments where there have been a few episodes here and there that have been really good, and then there have been other ones that have been really terrible, so it drags yeah. down the whole season. So this was season eight, right? Seven. Seven? Yeah. There were seven? Yeah. And it was really just like the past, I felt like just the past like three years that were not <laughs> great. Yeah, it's... It's one of those things, though, Rick. You have to look look back and and uh, think about how old you were when you saw your first episode of True Blood. <laughs> I wasn't. It wasn't that much. I wasn't that much younger because I got into it like three seasons in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you didn't watch it when it first started. Though. No, no. Okay. As I thought it see, was. See, I definitely did. Uh, it, when I heard about it, because I didn't really even see anything about it, I just heard about it, and I was right. like, ugh, another vampire stupid thing. Yeah. And so, but then, like, I started hearing that it was, like, super violent and really, like, awesome, you know, and it was so not like a Twilight vampire thing. So I was like, I'll give it a chance. So I went and bought the first season, and I loved it. And so I kept watching it. And, and,. And then, and then we got to this point, <laughs> right? Um, another thing that I thought was like it was just a, a minor moment in the show that I thought was really bad uh, in the last episode is whenever uh, Suki rescinds Bill's invitation to her house, yeah, and he just like takes his time leaving, kind of saunters. Whereas, like, every other time that has happened, it has, like, sucked the vampire out of the house. Yeah. The door flies open, and the vampire vampire gets gets sucked sucked out out. of the house like there's a vacuum outside. Right. 
and then Which the door slams sense. behind him. Because it's like rescinding some of your inv- a vampire's invitation to your house uh, causes some kind of magic to happen to fling open the door and yeah. I don't know. Is this... I mean, but at least be consistent with yeah. it, you know. I yeah. mean, because she rescinded Eric's invitation and it did that to him. Yeah, he's a lot more powerful than than he's than a lot Bill. older and a lot more yeah. powerful than Bill. And don't anyway. try to give me some bullshit about how <laughs> their their eternal love gave him the ability to to take, take a, a light time, stroll uh... <laughs> out of the house. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Uh, so stupid. But <laughs> overall, overall, uh, because granted, there there are not a lot of. I mean, I think we got a little spoiled with Breaking Bad. Because that was a show that was great from beginning to end. There yeah. are not a lot of shows like that. Almost every episode. Almost every episode was fantastic. Yeah. There are not a lot of shows like that. In fact, there are no shows like that. Yeah. You know, every show has a bad season or a few bad episodes, at least. There are no shows that are as pristine as Breaking Bad was. And I don't even think that when Vince Gilligan comes back and does another show, he'll be able to do that again. If he does... More power to him, but that is something that's so difficult to do. Yeah, I mean it's It'd be a, a success that's hard to duplicate. Sure, and so you know, you know, give True Blood credit where credit is due. It was decent early on, and it it kind of fell off later, which a lot of shows do. So it became less fun. Yeah, and it start. And that's what was that was what was the best part about it is that it was a fun, super violent. Filled with sex vampire show that everybody wanted because there was Twilight and then there was the exact opposite of it, which was True Blood. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, but yeah. Yeah. So True Blood's over. And then I've been watching The Strain and The Strain is quite good. Another vampire show, but very different. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. It's, it's almost, a, I mean. It's almost not a vampire show. Right. Yeah, you know. but I I very much enjoy it. I like it. It's it's one of the it's one of the good ones going forward. Okay. Um. But uh, then I watched uh, the Simpsons. I've been watching the Every Simpsons Ever marathon. Yeah. Which has just been. I mean, it's been, my TV's been on FXX for most of the past week because it is just it's just every episode. You know, now we're getting into some of the newer ones, and so I'm kind of less frequent with it. But early on, it was really hard for me to turn away from it because it was all those really, really great episodes. Now, did they start start off the marathon with the uh, the Tracy Ullman segments? I don't know because I wasn't there at the beginning. I think it was just it was the the first episode was the the Christmas episode, like that first that very first Christmas episode where they get a. Um, the dog. What's the dog's name? God, I can't Santa's remember. Santa's Little Helper. Santa's Little Helper. Yeah. 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 That was the first episode? That was the first episode. Wow. When they get Santa's Little Helper. How about that? So, um, and then I uh, I bought the, the Oceans trilogy on Blu-ray oh, yeah. from Amazon, which is really cool because it comes with little Oceans deck of cards and Paradise. Right. And so uh, I watched Oceans 11. Yes. And I wanna, I'm going to continue watching the others. Um, and then last night I saw, uh, as above, so below in theaters. Oh yeah. Okay. Which was decent. Yeah. It was a decent horror movie. Sure. I mean, it was, it wasn't perfect. I, you know, I mean, but it was, it was pretty fun to watch. It was pretty fun to watch. You know, it, 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 for for those horror movies that are like the found footage ones, yeah, because they've been doing a lot of those lately. Yeah, um, I remember one. There was one that was called like The Devil Inside or something like that, uh-huh. and it was just awful. Yeah, it was very, it was so bad. But this one was actually pretty pretty good. It was you know it was pretty decently scary, <laughs> decent story. You know, The d- Devil enjoyable. Inside that was the one where uh, they thought it was super clever to have like a tattoo of an upside down cross on the inside of her lip or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That was so stupid. Yeah. It was so dumb. Yeah. Um, cause guess what? When the lips not pulled down, cross the right side up. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, so she's good with Jesus <laughs> as long as she's got her mouth shut. Got her mouth shut. <laughs> and so is not jokes. folding her lip down. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, uh, um, yeah, that's it. Just those. Okay. Just those. All right. Well, uh, continuing to watch uh, Franklin Bash. It was kind of fun. You know, it's all right. It's all good. It's a throwaway show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Jesus is kind of like a Friday series. Yeah, I saw. It's all right. I saw some ads for it. It looked pretty yeah. decently funny. It's okay. I still can't figure out what it is that they're doing with it, but <laughs> they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Um, Hell on Wheels. It's a, it's a good season so far. Oh, Digging yeah? it. Yeah. I watched some Archer. Uh, watched uh, the first episode of this new series from Morgan Spurlock, Sp- Spurlock? Yeah. the guy from Super Size Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, called Seven Deadly Sins, and each each episode uh, focuses on a one of the deadly sins. And the first one was Gluttony, and it's talking about uh, the Heart Attack Grill. I think that's in Vegas. Yeah, something. Yeah, and uh, people who make large coffins and uh uh people who eat a lot for the sake of eating a lot right um i don't know it's it's the the presentation's kind of wonky yeah it's it's very ripley's believe it or not and i don't really Uh, like it uh Uh, so i probably won't keep watching that but you know like given Given his background with with uh, those kind of things, I, I thought I'd give it a shot. Right. Just it's I, it's not for me really. Um, it's very sensational, and I don't really like that. Yeah. So, I uh, also watched a new show called Intruders, which could turn into something good. It's from one of the uh, writers and produce executive producers from the X Files. Okay. And it's another one, kind of like the Leftovers. Um, where there's, this one's more conspiracy based though. Uh, and I haven't figured out cause they haven't given you enough information to figure out what it's about yet, Yeah, but it's, uh, it's a little darker. So darker than the leftovers, uh, from what I've seen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What channel is this on? Um, I don't recall. Okay. I don't recall. Okay. Anyway. Worth checking out, though. Um, I tried to watch an episode of uh, BoJack Manhorse or Horseman yeah. or whatever. It's terrible. I, I I've heard very like that. I've I've heard now that it's terrible from you, but from other people who've watched it, I've just heard like, oh, it's okay. You know, yeah. like nothing. Oh, it's so funny. You know, like nothing really right. fantastic about it. Which is a shame because it has a lot, a lot of good uh, voice actors on there. Yeah. Good, good actors who are doing voices, I guess. Yeah. Um, watched an episode of Skin Wars. Uh, my buddy Mythica was uh, competing on that show. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm gonna go back and watch it. I think she made it through episode or episode four before cool. getting eliminated. But it's a body painting competition. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's cool. You it know, is it's cool. It's not a great show, but, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Um, watch another episode of The Nick. Really enjoying that. Okay. It's Clive Owen and uh, Andre... I forget what his actual last name is. It's Andre 3000 from okay. the, from Outcast. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's great in it. He may actually be better than Clive Owen in it. Clive Warren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this most recent episode... <clears throat> It was really interesting because they had this last bit. It's the last scene in the movie where uh, Andre 3000's character, um, he's a black surgeon in the nineteen early 1900s, so he's not really uh, that popular at U.S. hospitals. Sure. Um, yeah. he, he's drunk, and he gets into a fight, and the view is from like... The camera's like about a foot from behind his head. Okay. But it has kind of the sway and swerve of like what your vision would be like. Oh. And it's such a like really, really cool scene. That is pretty cool. But it's a good show. And it's it's interesting to look at 
what they uh, considered cutting edge surgery and science back then. Right. Yeah. And of course, I watched True Blood. Sure. And this movie, uh, I watched Man of Tai Chi, but I think I didn't mention it last week, but I actually watched it last week. Okay. And that's one with uh, Keanu Reeves. Okay. Where he's like this head of an e- evil syndicate that does, uh, it's like fights to the death. Okay. Stuff like that. He's in, he's in charge of it. And, and, uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a karate movie. Okay. But it's fun. All right. And the choreography is awesome. All so, right. you know, it's just one of those. It's just one of those. They could be named anything and, and, uh, you know, that's it. Except, sure. Except Keanu Reeves is in it. Yeah. And he does not say, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. He doesn't do that. <laughs> and then I also went and saw uh, Sin City, A Dame to Kill for uh, a second time. Second time I saw it in 3D. Uh-huh. I saw it the and first it, time in 3D. And I think it it's better in 3D. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I saw it the first time in 3D. And the filter was not on the 3D camera, so for the first, like, ten minutes of the movie, it looked terrible. Oh. So I had to go, I had to go and uh, talk to the guy. You got to be the guy that talks to the guy? I got to be the guy that talks to the guy. I got to be one of the guys that talks to the guy, oh, because right. it was me, the person I was with, and then another guy in the theater, and me and the other guy in the theater went out and talked to the guy. Okay. So we were the guys that talked to the guy. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, I think that's it. Yep. Yep. It's about all the all she wrote today. Yerp. Yerp. All right. Yerp. Let's uh, move on to the whatcha playing. Brick, what you playing? Little Diablo. And... Are you pl- you're playing the remaster on the PS4, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Um, loving that as as per protocol. Yeah. Um, and uh, Madden 15. And how is it? It's good. It's yeah? really good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very impressed with it so far. So are you, are you going to be one of the people that jumps onto yes. uh, the EA thing on Xbox One, the five dollar a month or thirty dollar a year thing? Oh no, no. I thought you were going to ask about the Madden. Thing for PGL. Oh, the Madden League. Mm-hmm. You guys are organizing one. Yep. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Good for you. So that's fun. <laughs> that's so much fun. <laughs> um. Okay. And I played. Uh, I played some Battlefield with uh, PGL guys the other okay. night. Very cool. It was great. Uh, and I did much better than I normally do. I had a lot of a lot of games that I was as positive KD, which is unusual for me because I shoot people in the junk and it doesn't normally kill them. <laughs> um, but something that's really interesting. I'd read this article online talking about how to improve your game on Xbox One and PS4, uh-huh. and it was all about like going through and changing your settings on your television. Really? Yeah. So. Because I and I didn't realize this, but you need to switch your TV into game mode because it it actually pull it it increases the response time. But you need to go in and turn off all of the processing things like the uh, the DNR, the digital noise reduction thing, all, all the video processing that you can turn off. Turn it off. Turn it off, and it redu- reduces the uh, the lag. On um, between your system and the television. Interesting. And you know, it's it's a matter of milliseconds. But I will tell you, it makes a difference. Sure. And it was a noticeable difference because the first uh, first night I play after making those those changes to my uh, video settings on my TV, I did much better. Okay. I think I was positive KD all but one game. Wow. Okay, and I I, th- I uh, think I'm up to like nineteen point seven percent accuracy now. So. Wow, yeah. But Makes do that. Sense. Okay, do that. All right. it, it'll be worth your time. I mean, even if it it's just a minor thing, it makes a difference. Okay, like I said, it was noticeable. All right. Uh that's about it for me. You cool. got anything else you want to talk about before we sign off? Narp. Narp. 
<laughs> All right. Well, once again, uh, thank you everybody for watching and listening and liking and sharing in in all of our different venues. Of course, you can catch us at our website pregamelobby dot com, uh, PGL Lobbycast on Facebook, uh, Lobbycast on Twitter, and um, on Spreaker. And what else? I don't know. SoundCloud. I think we're on SoundCloud and Google Plus and <laughs> we're oh and iTunes and Zoom, obviously. Uh, well, yeah. Well, uh, Xbox Music now. Xbox Music, sure. It's not a Zoom marketplace. I think they got rid of that name. I still got mine through Zoom, through the Zoom software. Zoom, Zoom software still exists. Does it? It does. And that's what syncs to my Zoom. Fantastic. Xbox Music. Xbox Music would not sync to my Zoom. Fantastic. Fan freaking tastic. Oh. All right. Okay, love you. Bye. Bye. Now there are thoughts like these that keep me on my feet. That keep me on my feet.